It's Wes, welcome to this video. Today I'm gonna to share with you a product photography session I did with the Canon R5 and I was shooting the Fuji X-E4 which is uh, right here doing a little product photography shoot of this camera using the Canon R5. I wanted to show you how I use six elements of photography, subject, background, angle, focal length, composition, and lighting, along with a couple of other little secret techniques to make a really special image. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first one to tell you that. Instead of taking a shot like this, we're gonna show you how to get a shot like this. All right, I'm using the shotgun mic um, because not because I want you to hear the traffic outside, but because it's raining and I thought it'd be cool if you heard a little bit of the sounds of the rain outside. Don't know if that's gonna be picked up though. But uh, so it's been raining and I've been doing a little photography inside. So here's what I think about first when I'm doing product photography, the subject. So you identify your subject. For me, it's the Fuji X-E4, my daily carry camera and the 23 mil F2 lens, which I love. It's my favorite uh, Fuji X lens. That's the subject. Now the background, I don't know if you can see this, but um, here I have a stainless steel work table. Uh, and so I like to shoot on that because I get some cool reflections off of it. And so um, I have that mostly as my background and I want to control what else is in the scene. And I'm going to get more into that later, but basically I want an uncluttered background that draws attention to the subject. So that subject, background, and we're ready to move on. Now angle, I want to shoot this camera or the subject from about the same angle as it's on. So I don't want to shoot down. And there's a reason for that, even though I have a nice stainless surface, but I want to give the camera kind of a powerful stance, almost like a hero shot, like the camera is looking up at it. And so for that reason, I'm going to shoot kind of straight on. I'm going to also, this leads me to the fourth element. I'm going to choose a 85 millimeter focal length. Uh, the reason is because this is the subject. I don't want a lot of wide angle um, type of uh, composition. I don't want a lot of extra space around this. I want this to fill the frame. So I'm using a portrait lens for this product photography so this fills the frame. I want to really hone in on the product and have it dominate the frame. All right, now lighting. First I'm going to turn off, like right now I'm recording with the studio light. That's going to be off for this session. I'm going to turn off all the lights and then start introducing lights back into the frame. So the first thing I'm going to do is use this yellow LED light and I'm going to set it right here on the surface. So you can kind of see like this I had this set like this, I have this set like this, and I'm gonna start uh, fooling with the, the camera um, in front of the light just to see how it looks. Now, one of the first things I did is I realized that the camera uh, tips forward with the lens on, so I made the decision uh, to accentuate these pieces by removing this, and that also means the camera doesn't tip forward. So I started positioning things like this. However, I realized once I did this, uh, I could get some kind of cool uh, golden hues on this side, but I want to help create more uh, drama or uh, dynamic image. And so I got my other LED light and start coming in from this side. And so you can see like, for example, this, this lens here has a little golden light on it. By playing with these, I could sort of create more of a three dimensional shape to help draw out the drama of this kind of still life image. This is just sort of an equivalent of what I did because I'm talking to the camera and thinking about that, but I just started to move these elements around and you can see how they start catching the light differently. And um, so that's, that's how I began that. Is once I found a couple of compositions that I really liked, and these are uh, turned way up, I actually reduced the intensity of these lights because I, I didn't want them to be this harsh or this bright. Once I found a good balance of the yellow and blue light on this camera, um, then I added one other element as I didn't want to set up light stands. This was kind of a quick, easy product photography shoot. Um, I have this little light, it's a loom cube. Uh, you can see that right there. And I just held this above and behind. So at first I did a shot with it behind. You can see how it kind of adds a rim light there. And I'll show you in the shots how that works. But I also noticed because I didn't have light stands and I didn't uh, have the perfect stand to position this, I took a shot with this behind and then I took a shot with this kind of up and you can see how it adds a little edge light or rim light or backlight right there. 
And because the R5 was just sitting right here and I was shooting with this stable, I was able to click the uh, touch screen to trigger one shot. And so I'd have this, uh, this loom cube sitting behind and then the next shot I would hold it above and I cast a different kind of angle to catch the other rim light. So if that makes sense, I have the, uh, the yellow light on one side, the blue light on the other, and then I held this up above to get the, uh, the shine on the corner, and then I put it behind to get the shine on the side. And then in Lightroom, I adjusted those, and then I highlight those two images, open them in Photoshop as later layers, shoot, uh, select auto align, then auto blend, and it puts those two pictures together. That way I was able to create a special image with the extra rim light on, on both sides combined in Photoshop. Now it's very important for the composition. I'm using the Canon R5 on the table and um, I'm shooting all my frames with it in the same position. So the table is kind of like the tripod uh, because I'm gonna blend some frames, two or more frames in Photoshop. Um, and the other thing this does is because the camera is right along the surface here, and you can kind of see it here, it brings in the reflections. Uh, so like my hand, if I place it here, you see the shadowy reflections, kind of dreamy uh, reflections that um, lead into the subject. And so because of this stainless steel surface, I like to use the camera at that level of that plane so that the uh, dreamy kind of reflections in the stainless steel surface leads right into the subject. All right, we're not done yet. You might assume, I was shooting with this uh, Viltrox RF85 lesson, you might assume that I was gonna shoot at 1.8 wide open to blur the background to separate the subject uh, from, from the background. But actually what I wanted to do was I was gonna stop down and I was gonna stop down to F16 and there were three reasons why I wanted to do this. One is I wanted more of the camera in focus. It's powerful in product photography to be able to see detail, to really feel like the subject is clear. And so I wanted more in focus. Two, because I had uh, really controlled the, the setting with these lights that I added, I wanted to control the ambient light. Now I was shooting during the daytime, so there's, there's some windows in here, and so I had some sunlight coming through. And so shooting an F F16 really controlled or cut that ambient light and let the lights I'd set up for the purpose of the shoot really be the dominant lights. Another effect of cutting that light by stopping down is it starts to make the things in the background darker because they're further away from the lights that I'm using. And so I start to remove unwanted objects in the background just because the background is darker. So that's the three reasons why I used F16 along with this, uh, this little uh, loom cube for the edge light and the rim light on two different frames along with the two LED lights. And that's it. I stitched it together in Photoshop and there you have it. One stainless steel uh, table, two LED lights, the loom cube, and then stitching two frames together along with stopping down to F16 makes a really cool image. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for um, supporting this channel. Click like, click subscribe if you're not subscribed and I'll see you in the next video. I'm gonna make more tutorials so we are looking forward to uh, producing more tutorials like this in the next year. Peace.